गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू गुंडा चंद्रा हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल ओके सो इन दिस क्लास और इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर डिस्कसिंग ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ए वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट दैट इज योर साइक्लोट्रॉन ओके सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द साइक्लोट्रॉन बिफोर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द साइक्लोट्रॉन लेट अस फर्स्ट डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ और ऑन ऑन व्हिच प्रिंसिपल द साइक्लोट्रॉन बेसिकली बेस्ड अपॉन ओके सो बिफोर दैट लेट अस फर्स्ट फाउंड आउट सपोज a charge particle which is a charge particle q suppose a charge particle q okay which is moving with a velocity v is very carefully suppose a charge particle q moving with velocity v okay enters a magnetic field perpendicularly or normal to the magnetic field okay so what we are assuming now this is your magnetic field b clear and a charge particle q entering into this magnetic field with a velocity v in which manner that in perpendicular manner okay so now a charge particle is entering here perpendicular to the magnetic field with a velocity v clear so now when it entering the velocity v now what happens actually now we know that when a charge particle is moving with a velocity v in a magnetic field what is the amount of force applicable on it now that force is called your lorentz magnetic force that force is called lorentz magnetic force which we have discussed in the previous class okay so what is the expression of lorentz magnetic force now that force suppose this is for magnetic we have discussed in this previous class so fm is equal to how much now q whole into v cross P. These things we have discussed in the previous class. This is my magnetic Lorentz force. Clear all of you? Okay. So now that means this this expression can be written as Q V B sine theta. Clear all of you? Now what is our main important point here? Or what is our main aim? Now our aim to a this this charge Q is entering into this magnetic field B B with a velocity V. In which manner? Now in perpendicular manner. This is very important. In perpendicular manner. That means the angle between. This is very clear. The angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is 90 degree. Clear? So now when they are entering into this magnetic field, then we have to put this theta is equal to 90 degree. Very simple. Okay. So that is Q V B sine 90 degree. And we know that sine 90 is your one. So that means this is equal to Q V B. Clear. That means when the charge or the 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 charge particle entering into the magnetic field with perpendicular to the magnetic field, then it will have or it will exert the maximum force. Clear. And what is the amount of force? The amount of force is Q V B. Okay. So with this maximum force, the charge particle entering into the magnetic field. So when remember when this with this maximum force is entering in <coughs> is entering into this magnetic field, then what happens? Now the charge particle rotates. Okay, the charge particle will have what type of motion? Now it will have a rotational motion. Understood all of you? Clear? So when the charge particle again I will repeat when The charge particle Q with a velocity v entering into the magnetic field perpendicularly. Then what is the force exerted on that charge Q? Now that force becomes F m is equal to Q v b, and this force will be maximum. Clear? So with this maximum force is entered, the charge Q enters into the magnetic field, and this this force this force helps. to rotate the charge in circular manner understood all of you in circular path ha why because we know that from the first year knowledge or from our previous knowledge that to rotate any object in a circular path we require a specific force and that force is nothing but your centripetal force yes or no okay so now that means to rotate the charge this force Q V B will act like a centripetal force, or behave like a centripetal force. Understood all of you? Okay. So that means this Q V B 
is nothing but x or behave like a centripetal force which helps the charge to rotate in a circular manner in this magnetic field B. Clear of you? Okay. So that means now we can write here of okay, this charge, this force QBB is equal to. Okay. So this force QBB is equal to your the amount of centripetal force that is mv square by r. We know that the expression of centripetal force, all of you know that the centripetal force expression is mv square by r. Understood all of you? Okay. So that implies, look at it. So this v1, v becomes cancel out. Okay. So that means from this, we can write down the expression of v. So what is the expression of v? The expression of v is equal to q v r divided by m. Look at very carefully, dear student. So the velocity with which the charge enters into this magnetic field. What is the what is the expression of that velocity? Now that expression of velocity is equal to this much. V is equal to q v r by m. Or or we can uh, rewrite this expression in terms of radius also. Okay. So r is equal to how much? R is equal to mv divided by qb. So we can represent this expression in terms of velocity and also we can represent the expression in terms of radius. Where R represents the radius of this circular path. Clear all of you? Okay. So that means when the charge entering into this magnetic field perpendicularly, it will have a which type of motion? It will have a circular motion, first of all, and with what velocity it will enter into this magnetic field? With this velocity. Okay? And it will rotate, or where it will rotate in a circular path? What is the radius of that circular path? The radius of the circular path can be expressed in this form. R is equal to mv by mv. So look at this, this expression or this expression. All of you look at these two expressions, then you can easily then you can easily verify a very interesting point from these two. The velocity is directly proportional to the radius of that circular path. The velocity of this charge particle is proportional to the radius. The velocity of charge particle directly. So from this two expression we can write the V is proportional to R. The velocity of the rotation of the charge particle is proportional to the radius of the Okay, that means if the velocity increases, the radius of the path increases and the vice versa. If the radius of the path decreases, then the velocity of the charge decreases. So why I just told you? Because with this principle, listen very carefully, with this principle, the cyclotron what we have discussed next based on with this principle. Clear? So that means the expression of V we will get. The expression of V, we will get V is equal to QBR by M. Understood? So now, if this is my expression of velocity, can you find out the angular velocity? Yes. Because omega is nothing but your V by R. The relationship between angular velocity and linear velocity. Clear? So omega is equal to V by R. So that, that is equal to V expression we know. That is Q V R divided by M R. So R R cancel out. So that is equal to Q V by M. Clear all of you? So that means this is the angular velocity with which the charge rotate inside the magnetic field B. Understood? This is the expression of angular velocity. This is the expression of linear velocity. Understood all of you? Clear? So omega is equal to this much. So from this angular velocity, we can easily find out the frequency of rotation. Because if there is a rotation, there must be some frequency. Let us find out the frequency. So we know that omega is equal to 2 pi f. This is equal to omega, all of you know. Okay? So that is equal to this value. That is q b divided by m. So that it means the f. The f is nothing but the linear frequency. So f is nothing but q b divided by 2 pi m. So this is this is very 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 important. So this is the expression of your 
frequency. Which type of frequency? Nonlinear frequency. Listen very carefully. So with this frequency, with this frequency, the charge particle will rotate inside this magnetic field. In which case? Now in the case where the charge particle entering into the magnetic field perpendicularly is very very important. Understood all of you? Clear? Okay. So these are the very important part. Here the a questions can be arised. So what happens when a charge particle having a velocity v entering into the magnetic field perpendicularly? Then what happens? The path becomes first point. The path becomes circular in nature. Okay, that means it will not having a straight line motion. It will having a circular motion. Number one. Number two. What is the velocity with which it will rotate? Now V is equal to this mass. The velocity with which it will entering into this V is equal to this much. What is the expression of radius of this path? Now R is equal to this part. Okay. Then what is the velocity of rotation? Angular velocity? Omega is equal to this much. Okay, and lastly, but not the least, the frequency, the frequency with which it will rotate, the frequency becomes f is equal to q v divided by two pi. Understood all of you? Okay. So with this, with this principle, or with this, the cyclotron based on which we are discussing in the next part. Okay. So now I think all of you clear. So with this expression, uh, now we are moving into a interesting application of heat that is the cyclotron. Okay, so we are moving into a very interesting application of this. What we have what we have just discussed that is your cyclotron. Okay, first of all. So first of all, let us discuss some few points, very important few points about the cyclotron. First of all, what is the cyclotron? Remember, listen very carefully. Cyclotron is a particle oscillator. Any ion or particle will be accelerated. Will be accelerated using this device, cyclotron. So cyclotron is what? The cyclotron is a particle oscillator which helps to accelerate. The particle. Understood all of you? Okay. So this is the first point. This is the first point. That means what is cyclotron or what is the importance of cyclotron? The cyclotron is used. The cyclotron is a device with which a particle can be accelerated. Number one. Number two. Why this cyclotron is used? Because there are so many applications. There are so many applications in our modern research world where we are using a accelerated particle. There are so many applications, so many experiments. Okay, where there is requirement of accelerated charge particle to bombard a meat. Okay, so in the in this type of application we require accelerated charge particle. So how you will get this accelerated charge particle? We will get the accelerated charge particle using this device. <coughs> That is nothing but your cyclotron. Understood? Okay. So first of all, let us discuss about the structural analysis of a cyclotron and working principle. Okay. So look at very carefully the how or oh, what are the important parts of a cyclotron. Structural analysis, not a details analysis. So look at it very carefully. Okay. So this is a structural view of a cyclotron. Clear? So what the cyclotron actually contain? The cyclotron actually contain two D-shaped chambers. Look at here. There are two D-shaped chambers. Okay. These D-shaped chambers are called D. What are these are called? These are called D's. Okay. There are two. That's why we are writing D's. So any one is called D. Okay. Number one. Number two. Number two. It will, these two D's are connecting with the oscillator. They are connecting with the oscillator. What is the function of oscillator? Now oscillator helps to generate the alternating current or alternating voltage. Okay. So the oscillator provides the alternating voltage, alternating to this D's. Okay. Number two. Number three. 
Number three, the P. Look at this P very carefully. Okay, so what is that P in the center? There is a P. P is nothing but the ion source. Ion source denoted as the P, the center part. Look at here, this one. I denoted P, ion source. Okay, what is the importance or what is why this P or the ion source? is required now the requirement of ion source to uh, generate to generate the particle to generate the particle or ion whether it is it can be a positive particle or positive ion or it can be a negative particle or negative ion very simple okay then number four there is a deflector there is a deflector which helps I will discuss in the later on when I will discuss the working principle then I will tell you what is the function of deflector don't worry okay the next is your the whole look at it again with the whole structure the whole structure is present within the magnetic field look at this these are present within the magnetic field and the direction of magnetic field becomes outward becomes outward not inward they are outward in nature number one okay so there is a magnetic field which is outward in nature clear all of you and the last thing there is an exit port look at here this one this one this one is an exit port by which the charge the accelerated charge particle can be come out from this chamber so these are the structural part now how it work or how it functions to get here so let us first consider okay let us first consider a positive charge particle is generated from the ion source p clear all of you so what type of ion or what type of charge particle the positive charge particle let us assume that so we will assuming that a charge particle a positive charge particle is generated from the ion source okay this charge particle first enter into suppose this is my d d1 and this is my d2 clear so now when the oscillator gives the alternating supply to these two d's okay that means they are polar alternating voltage alternating current means they are polar in nature one can be positive one can be negative very simple okay so that means now we will assume that when the first positive charge particle enters into the d2 in this in this situation the d2 is very carefully the d2 becomes negative the d1 becomes positive okay again i will repeat when the positive charge particles is going to enter into the d2 in this case let the d2 this d becomes negatively charged and the d1 this d becomes positively charged okay so as it is become negatively charged so that's why the positive charge particle enters into the d2 and covers a half circle yes or no covers a half circle and again coming into the gap so this is nothing but the gap the gap between the two d okay so when the charge particle covers the half circle okay and enters into the gap in this situation the polarity of this d becomes reversed okay so now if the polarity become reversed then the d1 becomes negative and d2 becomes positive clear okay so in this situation now the charge particle is in the gap d1 becomes negative d2 becomes positive becomes positive so now it will enter in the d1 with a larger velocity or with a with a greater acceleration okay so the velocity becomes more and this process continues this process continues understood all of you clear so now all of you can visualize from this figure that as one circle completes the particle 
the radius of this path increases so what it signifies as the radius of the path increases the velocity of that charge particle which type of charge particle we will take or we we, we took we took positive charge particle so now as the radius of the charge particle increases the velocity of the charge particle increases because why just we have discussed in our previous session the velocity is directly proportional to the radius of the path clear all of you okay so now this charge particle one by one it will enter and <clears throat> where it will present in the gap when in this path or in this path or in this path the polarity of this two d becomes reversed okay so again i will summarize that one so listen again very carefully when the charge particle generate let me will assume that a positive charge particle is generated from the point p okay so first it will enter try to enter into the p2 so in this case the d2 becomes negative the d1 becomes positive okay and with this polarity the charge particle entering and crosses or covers the half circle okay and coming to the gap so when it will in the gap when the charge particle is in the gap the polarity of the two d is becomes reversed okay and in this case the d1 becomes negative and d2 becomes positive so with this now the positive charge, charge particle enters into the d1 with a greater velocity similarly it will again cover the half circle and it will come into the gap again when it will come into the gap the polarity reversed in the same the same process continues the same process continues up to which not to which when it will hit it with this deflector so now the charge particle when hit it to the deflector it will hit the deflector helps the charge particle to deflect through the exit port and the charge particle will coming out from the port and uh, this will apply in our required work understood so what we will get at the exit port now we are getting a accelerated charge particle this is our requirement because we define that cyclotron is nothing but the accelerated it will helps to accelerate the charge particle so particle accelerator understood all of you okay so now the the, the accelerated charge particle will coming out from this exit port so this is my general function okay so this is my general function of how it will works in this manner it will work so first point what are the inference from this we have just uh, in the previous session in the previous we will derive the expression of v that the, the expression of r okay so let us again apply to this so with what velocity it will enter the same thing So what is the force on this case in this cyclotron? What is the force? The force is nothing but the Lorentz force. So Lorentz force is nothing but Q V B sine theta. But it will enter the charge particle enter into this ninth uh, your uh, in into the magnetic field perpendicularly. So that's why theta is equal to ninety degree. So that means it will so Q V B sin 90 degree so that is equal to the maximum force and this this force will act like a centripetal force to have a circular path to rotate the particle in a circular path so qbb is equal to mv square by r so from this we will get the expression of radius you could very get the expression of radius So one we cancel out. So what is the expression of your radius in the m v divided by q b? <coughs> so here we will get the velocity is directly proportional to the radius. You get very carefully. As the velocity of the particle increases, the radius also increases. It will. The radius of the path gradually increases or not? Why? Why it will increase? Like it will increase due to the increasing in the velocity. Very simple. So this is my R. So from this we can easily find out. Look at very carefully. 
we we can also easily represent in terms of velocity so v is equal to how much na q v r divided by understood all of you okay so this is the velocity now in this case suppose i want to find out the <coughs> kinetic energy of a cyclotron okay so what is the expression of kinetic energy na kinetic energy is equal to half m v square all of you know the formula half m v square so half m this is the expression of v so that is q v r divided by m whole square clear so now now this is equal to 1 m become cancel out so what do you will get na q square v square r square divided by 2 m so this is my expression of kinetic energy of a cyclotron understood all of you this is the expression of kinetic energy of my cyclotron so kinetic energy is equal to q square v square r square divided by 2 Understood all of you. This is the expression of kinetic energy. This of cyclotron. This is the radius. This is the radius. The expression of radius of the cyclotron. Ah, uh, okay. This is the velocity with which it will rotate. Then similarly, we can easily find out the angular velocity. Angular velocity is equal to omega is equal to v by r. The same process. So omega is equal to v by r. So that is q v r. Divided by m r r r cancel out. So what is my expression? Now q b divided by m. This is my angular velocity. Okay. Then what is the frequency of the cyclotron frequency? Similarly, what is the expression of cyclotron frequency? Easily. So this is the two pi f is equal to q b divided by m because omega is equal to two pi f. So now f is equal to q b divided by Understood? Because why? Because we know that. Look at that. We know that the angular frequency omega is equal to two pi. F. We know that that is clear. So I have, so this is the frequency of what? The frequency of cyclotron. Understood? With which it will. This is the frequency cyclotron with which it will accelerate the charge particle. Understood? So these are the concepts. So what we will be for? What we will? The important point is that listen very carefully. The important point is that the frequency. Look at here. Look at this expression. The last expression. The frequency of revolution. Listen very carefully. The frequency of revolution of a cyclotron do not depend upon the velocity number one, and it also do not depend upon the energy of the particle. This is a very important concept of a cyclotron. Okay, so we will infer, we will conclude that the frequency of revolution of the particle or of the cyclotron does not depend upon the velocity of the charged particle or the energy of the charged particle. Understood, all of you? Okay, so with this, we will complete it. We have completed the concept of cyclotron, which is a very important part. I think all of you clear. Okay, so this is the whole concept. So the basic <coughs> summary is that. When a charged particle entering into the magnetic field perpendicularly, the charged particle will apply or exerted the maximum amount of force, the maximum amount of Lorentz force, and this force helps the charged particle to rotate within it. It will have which type of motion within the magnetic field? Circular motion. Why? Reason why it will have circular motion? Now because the maximum Lorentz force will act. Is a centripetal force. What we have just derived in this issue. That is, this is my maximum Lorentz force. This is my centripetal force. We compare these two, finding out the radius, velocity, angular velocity, kinetic energy, and this is my frequency of rotation. Understood, all of you, dear students? Okay. Okay. So this is for this session. This is for this now for this session. In the next two, we are. Discussing about a very interesting word. Okay, so have a good day. Thank you. So